Hello again, you're with BBC News. Time now for the top business stories. Let's get started then, and we are looking at Uber to begin with, because as I've just mentioned, UK drivers from today will have paid holidays, pensions and a minimum wage, a change that could be replicated in other countries around the world. And this comes one month after the US firm lost a long legal battle in the UK. It began in 2016 over driver's status. So in last month's Supreme Court hearing, Uber had argued it was a third-party booking agent and its drivers were self-employed. Our transport correspondent Caroline Davis has been talking to Uber's European boss in an exclusive interview. So that's Jamie Hayward there from Uber Europe. Now, more on the rollout of COVID-19 vaccines with more than 335 million doses given around the world so far. The race is on to develop a COVID-19 vaccine passport. Many countries, including Iceland, Poland, Portugal and Cyprus, have already announced plans for proof of vaccination certificates. Today, the European Union will present its digital green pass. And there are several airlines that are introducing their own digital health apps. Currently, there's no international consensus on how vaccine passports should be used. Many argue it leads to discrimination. The travel and tourism industry is desperate for a means to help smooth the return to safe travel as soon as possible. Well, I'm joined now by Bernardo Mariano, who's Chief Information Officer and Director of Digital Health and Innovation at the World Health Organization. Good morning to you, Bernardo. Thank you for being on the programme. So Good at the sorry. WHO, what are you saying about COVID passports? It really is a minefield, isn't it, when you've got different countries with different policies and even different companies, businesses, with their own uh, rules and regulations as well. It's really difficult for the individual to know what is required you to talk about the current situation in Europe with regards to the AstraZeneca vaccine and concerns that it could cause blood clots. The World Health Organization has been quite clear, saying it is a safe vaccine. But how does this play into people's confusion and fear? And also when it comes to uh, vaccination passports for those who don't want to have a vaccine. I'm Bernardo Mariano, their Chief Information Officer and Director of Digital Health and Innovation at the World Health Organization. And apologies if you didn't catch some of his answers there, but we persevered. The joys of tech, isn't it, during lockdown. So let's look at markets. As you can see in Asia, we are seeing um, a fall across the board in Asia. This is tracking what happened on Wall Street as investors are waiting to see what the US Federal Reserve, the central bank, will be saying, what it's talking about, future policy. So Let's look at Wall Street now. Don't forget the night before we had record highs. We had gains pretty much across the board. So you can see Wall Street treading water, if not a bit of a mixed close on Tuesday. Well, let's talk to David Madden, who's market analyst with CMC Markets, just to, to make sense of what's going on at the moment. Good morning to you, uh, David. So if we, if we just start with uh, a line I was looking at when I looked into markets today, and it's something I've read for days now, that... Uh, markets are heavily influenced by a route in treasuries. T to, you know, the layman, just explain what that means. Very well explained there, David. So brownie points at this time in the morning for you for that. But just to say, though, that there is a huge discussion about inflationary pressure, certainly in the United States, where, you know, nearly $2 trillion is being pumped into the, the world's biggest economy and, and what, what the Fed might do about that. So what will they say today, do you think? from CMC Markets. Other business stories and Honda's... Now, the pandemic hit cafes hard with sitting down for a sociable cup of coffee off limits for much of the last year. But with many of us stuck at home, businesses that sell coffee by post, often as part of a subscription service, have seen sales go up. Danny McFerrin lost work as a graphic designer in Belfast, Northern Ireland, so decided to set up a coffee delivery business. She was surprised by some of the things she found as she attracted customers as far as Australia and the United States. Good for Danny. We could do with a really strong coffee right here, right now, in fact. Stay with us on BBC News, still to come. So, St Patrick's Day in a moment, but first, some stories in the UK. Energy customers could get an automatic annual refund if they overpay their gas and electricity by...